algebra. Uh, you'll need this for your probability distributions and the key thing to look for to help you remember this stuff, because you will not remember it, I do not remember it, uh, is to use your formula sheet. So let's just have a wee look at the two bits that we're really interested in. Uh, there's this part here, mean invariance of a discrete random variable, and that looks like Greek to me. Oh, hang on, it is actually Greek, a large part of it. Okay, and then we've got that. That's not much better. Let's break this down for us. Okay, so if we look at this here, uh, what have we got? We've got the mean mu, which is Greek, uh, is equal to the expected value. So it's just saying the mean and the standard value are the same thing. Oh well, thanks for the reminder guys, really handy formula. Uh, sigma x dot p, so x times p. Oh hang on, this one is, if you multiply each outcome by its probability and add them all up, you get the expected value or the mean. So that's a little technique some of you might have used instead of doing it on your calculator. If you don't remember that, that's fine. Next two lines here, uh, just reminding you first off that your standard deviation is written using this letter here, which is called sigma. It's a lowercase sigma, and that sigma squared is your variance. So basically, what have we been told? The mean and the expected value are the same thing. Here's one way you could calculate it if you can't find it on your calculator. Um, we'll do some examples like that later. That uh, the standard deviation squared is the variance, or if you've got the variance, you could square root it to get the standard deviation. Then there's this formula here, which I'm hoping you won't use um, because, yeah, you could use it, just use your calculator, it's much easier. I will show you how to do it that way, but why not just use your calculator? Right, next slide. Boom. So the mean is the same thing as the expected value. You can find the mean by multiplying probabilities by their outcomes or outcomes by their probabilities, and the variance is the standard deviation squared. That's what we've learned so far. Right, this stuff here, uh, I thought best to sort of show you by example what it actually means. Um, uh, probably not going to get onto this one in the video, this video, but I will be doing one very soon. I'll certainly be teaching it in class. Okay, so let's have a look here. We've got some random distribution. There's one one, two twos, three fives, and nine in my distribution, and I'm calling it A. Okay, so what would happen to the center of this data as you added five to each value. Where would the center go to? And what would happen to the spread of this data as you added five to each value? So, so think of it graphically, what would happen to that graph when you added five to everything? Okay, so let's just have a wee look on the next slide. What would that look like? So here's the original distribution. It's had to squeeze up a bit to make room on my axis, but basically this one's gone down here. Oh, oops, so these two have gone here, these three have gone here, you know, they basically all just moved up five places. So what's happened to the center? Let's say that the center is about here, then that center has moved to there. So basically what we can say is that the mean has increased by five, okay? So if you add five to each value, the mean's going to increase by five, all right? Cool, fair. What about the spread? What's happening to the spread there? So, oh, I meant to uh, sort of give you a bit of uh, hesitation there, but notice the spread on both of those is exactly the same. So the means increased by five, but the spread has stayed the same, which means the standard deviation stays the same, which means the variance also stays the same. So adding five to each value makes no difference to the spread, makes no difference to the standard deviation, because that's measuring the spread, and obviously, therefore, makes no difference to the variance. So adding something on increases the mean, but doesn't increase the variance or the standard deviation. What if instead of adding the same thing each time, we multiplied by three. So what's going to happen to the center? What's going to happen to the spread? Hmm. Let's have a wee look at, at, at the picture. Now, uh, this time I've got A at the bottom and 3A at the top. So what's happened here? If 
first off, what's happened to the center? Let's say that the center is just to the left of that pile of three. I can't quite remember where it really should be, but let's say that that's the case. So it's just a bit less than five to just a bit less than 15. Okay, so it looks like that's been multiplied by three. So when you uh, multiply each value by three, the mean gets multiplied by three. Now what's going to happen to the variance? Okay, so obviously, well, what's happening to the spread there? Hmm, let's just have a wee look. Looking at that without the line there, I'm just going to have to skip over there, and whoa, the spread is massively increased, okay? Uh, now, I'm just going to have to tell you here that what's basically happening is the standard deviation has been multiplied by 3. Now, seeing as the variance is the standard deviation squared, the variance is multiplied by 3 squared, or 9. Uh, so that's what your formula sheet actually tells you there. So if we were to go back to it, because I just realized I hadn't put in a slide about this. Um, okay, so basically what this is having is if you take the mean, I'm oh, sorry, if you take each value here and you multiply it by something and add something to each one, uh, then the mean is multiplied by that same number and the same number is added to it as you added to each score. Right, so it does exactly what you expect. You multiply all the values by 3, it, the mean gets multiplied by 3. You multiply all the values by 7, the mean gets multiplied by 7. You add on 12, the mean gets 12 added to it. Variance is a bit more complicated. Let's say we took every value and we multiplied it by 2 and added 11, then the variance isn't going to be affected at all by the adding 11, so there's, notice there's no B here. Okay, uh, but um, what is going to happen is that when you multiply it by 2, the variance is going to be multiplied by 4, or 2 squared. So you multiply by 2, the variance is going to be multiplied by that number squared. Okay, cool. Um, I'm not going to look at these right now. We will come back for them, don't worry later on this period if you're my class. So let's have a look. What would happen? Hang on, that's not that's not the one I wanted. Oh, all right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've already done this. Right. Skip, skip, skip. I've still got some cool stuff. No, I don't. Have a look at a bicycle. Oh, no, that's another bicycle. Yes, that's a bicycle. Believe me. 